Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another tutorial. In today's video, we're going to be talking about conditional formatting that you would typically do in Excel, but I'm going to show you how to do that in Python using the pandas library. If you do a lot of data analysis at work, you're definitely going to find this helpful because conditional formatting is something that a lot of people do on almost a, I would say a daily basis, depending on the type of data set you're dealing with. And today what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through some fictitious data that I had created. And this is really some sales data for some specific categories for the month of July. Um, and again, if you haven't watched some of my previous tutorials, one of the things you'll notice that I always like doing is I like building to scale. And that is you code it once and then you reuse it over and over again to automate things and to save a whole bunch of time down the line. And for those of you who are just joining in today, Welcome to the channel. If you want to up your game in data science, Python programming, machine learning, this is the place to be. Hit that like button and subscribe button and let's get started. So typically anytime you're going to do any kind of conditional formatting in Excel, you'd go ahead and find the conditional formatting menu here, which is under format, conditional formatting, and then you would go ahead and add a whole bunch of different criteria based on what you're specifically looking for. Now to do this once, it's no problem. It's fairly straightforward and it's easy to do in Excel. But can you imagine having to repeat this for tens, if not hundreds, if not thousands of spreadsheets on a monthly basis or even a more frequent basis? It can get quite cumbersome. So why not just build the automation once in Python and then run it over and over again so that you don't have to worry about this kind of stuff? So here's what we're going to do today. We're going to go ahead and import this data set into Python. Then I also want to derive some additional data here. So if, if you come from retail sales, one of the things you'll know that people always look at is the margin rate. And so we're going to bring that in here as well because we want to see what specific categories are driving the best sales and margin, but at the same time, what kind of margin rate they're getting. So while I can do this very easily in this, by just taking my margin dollars divided by my sales dollars, I can do this in Python and just automate this going forward. So let's go ahead and open up a new Python IDE in Jupyter Notebooks. And so the first thing we're going to do always is we're going to go ahead and import some of the important libraries. So we're going to import pandas as PD. And I don't know if we're actually going to use any additional libraries or not, but we'll go down the line and we'll see whether or not we're going to be using something else. I don't think so, but let's keep going. The next thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and import our data frame. And so that's just basically going to be equal to DF is equal to, and I have that saved right here as a file called retail sales.xlsx. So let's bring that in. And so for that, we're just going to do pd.read underscore Excel and then bring in the file name. And so we can just look at the file very quickly and it shows that we have exactly what we had there, which was category, month, sales, and margin. All right. So like I said, the next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and derive margin rate. So to do that, you would just go ahead and create a new data frame column and we're going to call it margin rate. And that's going to be equal to DF margin divided by DF sales. And so when I go ahead and rerun that, you're going to see I have a margin right here. So one of the things in retail you always want to understand is, all right, well, which categories are performing well and which categories are not performing well? So in this case, I want to go ahead and set some kind of a threshold. And the threshold is, I want to say that if my margin rate is below a certain percentage, I want to go ahead and understand what category that is. So highlight everything here if that is true. So let's go ahead and first set our margin rate. So why don't we arbitrarily pick a margin rate here? Let's just say 50%. So we're going to say our threshold, or we're just going to say margin, margin threshold is equal to 0.5. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and create some kind of a statement. And in this statement, what I want to understand is whether or not my margin rate, if it's below 0.5, I want to go ahead and highlight this entire row as red. And if it's greater than 0.5, I want to highlight this entire row as green. And there's one other thing I forgot here. I should say as type, so we'll say as type float. And I spelled float wrong. So there we go. So if I were to go ahead and reprint the data frame, this is actually just going to be a float value here. And that's what we want. All right, cool. So the margin threshold has been set. So how would we go about in doing something like this? So we have to go ahead and apply something called a style. And so pandas has 
uh, something called a style built in and what that allows you to do is you can go ahead and generate some kind of an if statement and say that if a certain condition is true apply this style otherwise if the condition is not true then apply this style so let's see how we would go ahead and do that we're gonna go here so we're gonna type df dot style dot apply and typically here you would pass some kind of a function like for example we're gonna be t we're gonna be using a highlight function which I'll walk you through later on for now what we're gonna do is I want to go ahead and create some kind of a function that says if something is less than the threshold then apply red if it's greater than the threshold apply green now I can go ahead and define a new function or I can use lambda and lambda something remember it's like a throwaway function you use it once and you don't really need to use it again throughout the code so we're gonna say lambda x and then we're gonna say we're going to use list comprehension now. So we're going to say background is equal to red if x is less than the margin threshold. And then we're going to say else background green for x and df dot margin underscore rate. And that is going to be on the zero axis. All right, so let's see what this does. Uh, it says gender expression must be parenthesized. Oh, that's because I put my close bracket a little too early so we'll go ahead and add it here a square bracket that is there we go and so now what you'll see is you'll see that everything in this row that is less than 0.5 has been highlighted red everything greater than 0.5 has been highlighted green so if I go ahead and play with this threshold so let's just say that I want everything I want my threshold now to be 0.3 so in, and that means this should be green when we actually go ahead and rerun this. So let's run this again and run this and you see now this is green. So this is a really good visual if you wanted to export this out and, and put it in a presentation or convert it to Excel, you can do that. And it's such a simple way to do it. Really all you're doing is you're passing in a file and it's doing all the work for you in the background. There's no no need for me to go ahead and put in any additional formulas anywhere. But now you may be asking, you may be saying, okay, wait a minute, one style sheet is possibly not enough. And the second thing is what if I actually want to go ahead and do it by individual column? So I want to have a certain threshold for this column. I want to have a certain threshold for sales and a certain threshold for margin. Well, I got you covered. So let's go ahead and do that now. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and create an overall style and I'm going to call that DF underscore styled. And that's going to be basically a nested style sheet. So let me show you what that looks like. So we'll do DF dot style. And now what I'm going to do is that basically tells Python that, hang on, there's something on the next line that you need to treat as a part of this condition as well. And so we're going to tab over. To do a nested style sheet, I'm going to actually copy and paste this command in that I had already written, and then I'm going to walk you through what this is doing. And I'm actually going to copy all of them. So not only do I want to set up a threshold for margin rate, I also want to set one up for sales and for margin. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste the rest of this code that I typed. And I'm going to walk you through what this exactly means. All right, so here's what we're doing. We're creating a nested style sheet in that we're basically saying that under df.style, I want to go ahead and apply the following styles. So in the first one, what I'm saying is very similar to above. We're going to have a lambda function. I'm going to say the background color, and this is where the color is going to come, whether it's going to be red or green. Uh, that's what this is going to be here. If X is less than, and I use hurdle rate in my other one, but let me go ahead and change this back to margin threshold. Is less than the margin threshold. We're going to use red. Otherwise, your background color is going to be green. And then I do the same thing for the next one. If my sales value is less than my sales figure, which we're going to define in a second, have it red, otherwise green. And similarly, we're going to define a margin figure in a quick second. We're going to say if X is less than that, make it red, otherwise make it green. So we define a margin threshold, but it'd be great to actually define a sales threshold. So we'll call it sales underscore fig. And what I'm going to say is anything that's less than $46,000, let's isolate or let's put down as red otherwise it's going to be green and for margin why don't we go ahead and say ten thousand dollars just to make it nice and easy so that's been initialized that's been defined all right so now when i go ahead and run this all right so it doesn't give me any errors which is good so let's go ahead and print what this data frame is going to look like and boom there you go basically now what it says is that if my sales was less than i said we said forty six thousand dollars make it red which you know these qualify here so this is a good indication to say that obviously 45 is less than 46 so it's red and then this is green we said if margin is ten thousand dollars or below make it red otherwise make it green and then we said our margin rate is going to be 30 percent and very similarly that prints out too so this is really cool because like i said you create the style sheet once and you can use this over and over again so the next thing you may be asking is well how do i get this back into excel let's say i did want to do this and i want to put this in excel how do i do that 
It's actually very simple. There's two quick ways to do it. The first one is we would just go here and say dot two underscore Excel, and then we'll call it style dot XLSX. The engine we're going to use is going to be OpenPy Excel. And then finally, I don't need any indexes. We'll just keep that equal to false. All right, so when I do this, what should happen is I should go into my directory, which I'm just trying to find here. And now it's actually got a new sheet called style.xlsx. So let's open that. As you can see, it's actually styled everything for me, which is exactly what I wanted it to do. Now that was the first way to do it. So let's close this up. Let's go back to our directory. Let's delete this so that we can generate it the second way. And the second way is actually adding it right to the nested style statement above. So to do that, you just do this, copy and paste the dot two Excel and everything else after that. And we're just gonna append it right there. And so if I get rid of this, what you'll see is this thing is now going to generate that file. Again, style.xlsx. Let's just call this style two, rerun. And now you'll see style two is right there. And again, it's got everything we need in there. So remember, I ran this for the month of July. Can you imagine running this over and over again for different months? especially when these are, you know, this is a very simplified data set, but can you imagine running this for a very complicated data set over and over again? So that's how you export it out to Excel. But let me show you some other cool stuff with this. And that is we can further go ahead and style and format this in Pandas itself. So for example, if I wanted to go ahead and take the margin rate and I wanted to have a currency type margin rate. So to do that, I would just go ahead and add in something like this. And what this here is doing is it's going to take the margin rate. It'll add the dollar sign in front of it. It's going to have two decimal places and it's going to treat it like a currency. And so I can do the same thing with sales. So let's go ahead and do that. And so let's just see what this looks like very quickly. So we're gonna go ahead and print this out down here. And now you can see the sales figures actually have, they actually look like they're currency dollars with the dollar sign in front of them. So sales and margin both actually look like currency. So now I wanna convert this into a percentage. How would I go about doing that? And so very simply what I can do is, is add another format for this. And all this is saying is make this two decimal places and add a percent at the end. So if I go ahead and print that, you see it says 20.71% with the percent sign after it. And finally, one of the other things I want to know is I want to understand out of all of these, where is the minimum setting? Because as a retailer, I want to know where the lowest dollar figure from a sales margin and margin rate are sitting. So to do that, I can just use a built-in function called highlight underscore min. And once I do that, now it's actually going to go ahead and say, you know what, your cell phone category has the lowest margin, even though it's under the threshold, it is the lowest out of everything. Your video games both have low sales and low margin. So a lot of cool things you can do with this. And again, I want you to think about automation and repeatability and the ability to just take a hundred different spreadsheets and just whip it right through this. You can take all those different spreadsheet names. You can, you can create a list of them and you can sift through all of them. It'll automatically do that as well. And I'm most trying to drive people as well as my team to what I would call low touch to no touch. And what I mean by that is if I need to touch it, it's really only for maintenance. Otherwise, anything that I derive, anything that I build, I want to make sure that it's 100% completely automated so that it's something that's sitting in the back burner. It's getting done on its own and I never have to worry about it. So guys, that brings this tutorial to the end. I hope you guys enjoyed this really cool tutorial. The other thing I'll say is I didn't find a lot of what I would call quality and decent sources online on actually how to do this and get it kicked out into Excel. And so I really wanted to create something for you guys that was simple to learn, simple to understand, simple to execute, but also something that you can use in your day-to-day -day job. So guys, hopefully you found this helpful. If so, always remember to continue, like, subscribe, and share. And I will see you next time. Thanks very much. Okay.